right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox. And this week I'm right smack dab in the middle of trying to put out a brand new 3D asset pack, the City Buildings Pack. It is 45 brand new stylized 3D assets. They pair really nicely with all the other assets on our website. We have some skyscrapers, some walk-ups, and then also a bunch of objects that can go on top of the buildings like satellites, chimneys, billboards, etc. That being said, the stage I currently am at is I need to UV map these objects. And while newer versions of Cinema 4D finally have good UV mapping tools, the version I am currently on does not have that great of UV mapping tools. So I use a program called Rhizome UV. And this is a great program, it's super easy to use, and it also has a plugin that allows you to go back and forth between Cinema 4D and Rhizome really easily. So if you're interested in a beginner's guide to Rhizome UV, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is obviously install the app and then install the Cinema 4D extension. They tell you how to do all that on their website, so I'm not gonna focus on that. But once you have that done, what we are going to do is crack open um, our model. If you have your object stacked under this subdivision surface, it does understand subdivision surfaces, which I find cool, but kind of infuriating at the same time. So I'm going to pull this outside of it and then select kind of my null of all of these objects. You can see it's quite beefy. And I'm going to bring this whole stack of objects inside of Rhizome UV. Um, and the way you do that is go up to extensions and Rhizome UV exporter. Uh, the first thing I wanna show you is if you go to options, if you have any UV maps that you've started on or you wanna maintain, make sure new UVW is unchecked when you export into Rhizome UV. Otherwise, if you have it checked on like I'm going to do, it basically takes any UV maps that are currently on your objects and kind of wipes them clean. I obviously don't care about the UV maps on my current objects, so I'm just gonna wipe them clean. I'm gonna hit save. And then I'm going to go back to extensions, Rhizome UV exporter, and say export to Rhizome UV. And right away it pops open the Rhizome UV app and you have your model and all the objects inside of it ready to go, which is pretty cool. One thing that's great right away about this app is it does kind of a model check for you. So as you can see here, I brought this object in that I thought was all seamed up and looked really great, um, but it kind of found overlapping points. And this is probably because I used a symmetry object to model this. So it's seeing right away, hey, you have kind of some lines that aren't actually connected. So what I can do with that is anytime I wanna hop directly back into Cinema 4D, you just hit save. So I'm gonna hit Command S since I'm on Mac. Closes Rhizome UV, pops it back inside of Cinema 4D. It pops it as a new object, so that way it never fully overwrites um, your old object in case you wanna keep it. But I'm just gonna fix up those problems really quick and then I'll hop back into Rhizome UV. A few minutes later. All right, so I fixed that up. So now I'm going to hop back into Rhizome UV. Once again, it pops it right open and then I can get started. And all of those lines are now cleared up, which is great. So you can see on the left-hand side, we have vertices, edges, planes, and objects. So if you select objects, this works how any 3D program does. Uh, Rhizome highlights the object you're selecting. And then what you can do from there is basically isolate, hide, or show. So if you have a bunch of objects like I do in this case, I want all these objects to be UV mapped so I can eventually pack them onto the same UV texture, um, but they're kind of in the way of each other right now. So I'm going to select, let's say this frame of the window and hit isolate. So that hides everything else so I can just focus on this frame of the window. Um, and generally how UV mapping works in any program is you can think of your object as a cardboard box with tape on it. When you're breaking down that box to put in the recycling, you know, you cut the tape apart um, so it can be flattened in a specific way. So you're really trying to think, okay, how can I completely flatten this object down to a cubic or round shape? Um, based upon the cuts I put onto this object. So I'm going to select the edges and you can, you can kind of select individual edges. You can also hold command. I'm on a Mac currently uh, to select groups. Um, and then you can also double click 
to select edge loops. So here I'm gonna select this edge loop. I feel like here's gonna be a really nice place for a cut. And then I'm going to hold command and do another edge loop here. And what this should do is kind of cut here uh, so the whole thing can unwrap and then also all of these sides will lay out nicely. If you go up to your left hand corner, there is cut and weld tools. And what I wanna do is hit the cut tool and you can see when a cut is made on your geometry, it turns from blue to orange. So orange always means cut. And then from there, I'm going to select the object again and then go up here and hit unfold. And you can see it did a pretty good job already. Uh, it unfolded it into a rectangular shape. And then you basically want to pack this object into your texture, which is currently hidden way down here. For some reason, it's always really zoomed out. I think it's because of the object space or something like that. Um, and I want to say pack with my object selected. And now boom, it packed it inside of my UV texture. You can do a few things with it in this instance. If I wanna check kind of how the texture is looking on this, go over to this texture zone, hit checkered. You get a nice checkered pattern across your whole object. Um, this is looking pretty good. You can see a few little waves here and there, but that really doesn't bother me. There are a few other tools in here I just wanna show you quick. Um, my UV map looks pretty good. I'm probably not gonna actually touch it, but on the left-hand side, there's kind of this wavy tool. There's a spherize tool and a pinch tool. Um, so if you select these, I'm gonna select this wavy one, which is actually a move tool. It gives you this nice brush. Over on the right-hand side, there's kind of the press and radius settings that you can set. So maybe I wanna bring the radius down a little bit. Um, and you can come in here if your UV map isn't laying out exactly how you want and kind of push and pull these um, to your heart's content. And what's cool about Rhizome as well is if your UV map is kind of getting really extreme or it lays out really wrong, you'll see the color on the UV actually starts to change. So where it's really nice cyan, it's actually a really nice UV map and where it's kind of getting to this blue and even more red you'll see on your object. Like over here, you see some red. Uh, that's where it's really stretching too far on the UV map and it's not gonna look good on the texture. So that's just a quick uh, tip and other tool you can use. I'm gonna leave mine how it is. And then from here, just go back up and hit show. And that's gonna bring all your objects back in. And you can see I have one of many objects done. So I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me UV this for half an hour. I'm gonna speed ramp it and then at the end, I'll come back and show you how I bring all this back into Cinema 4D. All right, here I go. Okay, so I have this pretty much fully UV modeled except for these bricks. And you probably saw me jumping back and forth between Cinema 4D during the time lapse. And you'll notice that these bricks um, or some of these objects kind of change to a red color. And all that I was doing is I was hitting save. So if I hit save right now in Rhizome, it closes Rhizome, throws what you did back into Cinema 4D so you can see a duplicate version here. It's nice Rhizome does this for the end product, but in the interim, it's a little annoying. It kind of keeps throwing it back. And then just to make sure you don't overwrite these UVs, you have to do what I had said previously, which in the options in the export, just make sure new UVW is not checked. So that way, when I send this back to export to Rhizome and I turn this checkered texture back on, uh, our UVs are still there. Another thing I wanted to do with these bricks to show you that is a really handy tip that I took quite a while to figure out myself is you can group select things and group cut things. And what I mean by that is if I go down to my object selection and I select this brick, this brick is pretty much the same object as a ton of these bricks. 
And so if I go over here on the kind of right hand side in this select palette, there is a threshold zone and then kind of these two buttons. And so if I click this button, it's going to try and select what it thinks is similar objects. And sometimes you have to up that threshold or lower that threshold. And it's kind of thinking down here, you'll see uh, it looking around and thinking for things. And then I'm gonna isolate. So that way I was able to group select those and you're not kind of individually clicking on things as you go to try and isolate them. And then the same thing goes for cuts. So it would obviously be really annoying if I have to go through all these and do the exact same cut when they're pretty much the exact same object, but you want them to take up individual uh, UV texture space. So we wanna make sure they each have their own UV coordinates. So I'm going to on this first one, just do a cut pattern like so, like most bricks are like most cubic objects are. And then from there, don't hit the cut yet. Go over to this button, which is edges. Ah, I love that. Just immediately does it to all of them. And now we can choose cut. We cut all of them at the same time. I'm gonna highlight them. Lay them all out, hit show so I have all my objects. And then I'm going to select all of my objects and hit pack up here. And there we go. We have the whole UV mapping done for this object. Now, another thing I'll do here is if you go over to this kind of secondary checkered texture, it will have numbers on it. And this is really good to see kind of which way things are oriented. Um, you're not gonna be able to get everything oriented the exact same way, but it is helpful to know um, how some things are oriented and shift some things around if you feel necessary. So like this bottom piece, I'd really like it to be going the same um, direction as the top piece, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change this around like that. There we go. I'm just gonna throw it up here for now. Let's see what way the garage is going. Okay, garage is going good. Let's see what way this is going. I'm gonna rotate this around. Rotate this. So again, this step isn't fully necessary, especially if you're gonna be painting on this stuff, but uh, I just want things that are like to be going the same direction. So that's feeling pretty good. And then from here, I wanna select all the objects again, and instead of hitting this top pack button, I'm gonna hit the bottom one, which basically has this extra little icon on it that means preserve orientation. So if I click it, You'll see it repacks all of them, but it kept the rotation of this bottom cube down here to be the same. All right, and then all we have to do from there is hit save. And we're back. This topmost one is my object. Just to show this works, I'm just gonna throw a checkerboard pattern onto a material and throw it onto my object. And that is an introduction to Rhizome UV. All right, I'm gonna delete this texture, it's hurting my eyes. If this video helped you out, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, that helps us out a ton. If you have any questions or comments or you know uh, more tips and tricks about Rhizome, I'd love to hear them in the comments section below. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D model assets, including the City Buildings Pack, which should be out in the next couple weeks, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. All right, I'll see you next time.